Let's go forward and install a virtual trunk switch. As you would with any short tail deployment, log into the shortware director, go to platform hardware, primary, and <clears throat> add a new switch or appliance at the site. Go ahead and select the site you're going to add that appliance, and then select the type of appliance you're going to add. Um, in the drop-down window, you'll see the normal library of short tail uh, orange boxes, including the SA100 and 400 uh, conference appliances. Uh, down at the bottom of the list, you will find three virtual uh, solutions, the short gear phone switch, the short gear uh, virtual trunk switch, and the virtual appliance or collaboration switch. Uh, this time we will select the trunk switch and uh, we'll go ahead and get this uh, prepared for installation. Uh, before we can go ahead and fill out the basics that you would fill in for any other uh, deployment, we actually need to go create the appliance. So uh, typically you will hit the download the switch image, but understand uh, where you're downloading it to. This this image needs to be made available to your host machine that will uh, be the host for your virtual uh, appliance deployment. These images uh, live on the Shortel headquarters server. They live uh, in the FTP root, and you will find them in the TSV folder and the TSU folder. Uh, my belief is that the uh, here's your short gear uh, OVA folder. Let's uh, expand this just a bit. And the actual bare metal ISO lives here. And uh, the same goes for your uh, SA appliance. It's just in the other folder. So Go ahead and download this. Once it's uh, downloaded and made available to your virtual machine, let's go create the virtual machine. Now, um, I'll point out that um, this is an unsupported configuration. Shortel does not uh, support VMware Player. I'm doing this entirely for educational purposes to demonstrate the install. You will need a VMware Five, uh, five or 5.5 5 or hyper hyper uh, V from Windows. Um, either one will be supported by Shortel. VMware Player is not supported. Again, I'm just doing it for giggles. But um, let's go ahead and open a virtual machine. At that point, we're looking for the OVA file that uh, we previously downloaded. And we'll go ahead and select it. And to open it up, you'll want to do something here. Uh, so we're going to use this primarily to configure our support for SIP. And so uh, having said that, let's just go ahead and name it something that's useful, like SIP support switch. I'll have that very clever. Um, let's go edit the virtual machine settings and take a look at what we have here. Uh, the default here is 2 gigabits memory, one processor, 20 gigabit hard drive, and uh, so on. Uh, where you'll find your biggest challenge is in your network adapters. Here I'm setting it for bridged and power on. Um, if you set this for NAT, you will have some problems, so make sure you have your um, uh, NIC cards uh, sorted out appropriately, and you should pay attention to the short tail requirements for virtual uh, platforms, specifically as it relates to NIC cards. So at this point, uh, that's all goodness. Let's go ahead and, and turn the machine on. At that point, um, we'll begin to uh, take a look at the OVA file. 
and uh, we'll begin our configuration. It goes uh, for, for, for the V-trunk v switch, goes relatively quickly, but they all look pretty much the same in terms of what you can expect to see on the screen. So, <clears throat> so at this point it's asking me, am I going to uh, use DHCP or static? I'm clearly going to uh, statically assign my IP addresses, so it's, it, it's asking for the static IP address. <laughs> and at that point we'll continue the rest of uh, the setup. Again, it, it goes relatively quickly. Ultimately, you will arrive at the uh, login screen if you've had a successful switch build. So, um, you log in as root and you use the normal Shortel password. And at this point, we're inside Wind River Linux. And <clears throat> if you're familiar with the, uh, Linux, you will find that you will be very comfortable at this prompt. Let's take a look at our, our interfaces and we're fine. So uh, at this point, uh, <clears throat> you can start the command line interface. And that will bring up the uh, familiar short tell menu system. And we can go ahead and take a look at the actual system configuration, which we can see is um, essentially what we previously put into the system. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, the FTP address is set, DNS is set, and uh, that you have a time server. NTP time services are essential. Uh, to the operation of these devices. So make sure you have a good clock. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and um, change the configuration of my, um, let me see here. You get your familiar menu system, and we want to take a look at the system. Could do that at this point change the system configuration, set the FTP server, which is another way of saying Shortel headquarters server, but it doesn't have to be that way. Some echo there. And let's set uh, DNS. And our time server was configured so at this point, um, we've got a fully configured virtual switch. We can go back to our deployment screen here and go ahead and fill us in. So we're going to add a, a virtual SIP trunk switch. The IP address. Uh, it's in the same subnet, uh, properly configured, so I should be able to uh, find that switch, which we have done here. Go ahead and select it, MAC address. Yeah, and uh, at that point, we have a built-in SIP trunk capacity of 100. So uh, let's go ahead and save that puppy. And if we go here to Quick Look, and as you can see, our virtual SIP trunk has been successfully installed and is available for configuration.
Let's take a look uh, at the impact on licensing. So we, we have this uh, new virtual SIP trunk. Uh, obviously, we didn't pay for one of those orange boxes, but let's, let's see the impact to licensing. If I go over to licensing here and look at my requirements, you can see that uh, we are currently in compliance. There's no problems here. I have, uh, I have trunk, the trunk licenses is here and I have uh, a trunk group already configured for SIP. Uh, SIP trunk configuration is not unlike uh, you would configure any other trunk group so there's nothing special about it. Uh, uh, I think that maybe the biggest difference is that you may have to address uh, digest authentication and typically the number of digits you get uh, in a SIP trunk is 10, but other than that, this uh, this configuration is the same as any uh, SIP configuration you would otherwise set up. Now, in this example here, I also have two existing SIP trunks set up. So all I'm going to do at this point is uh, modify the switch that I have these uh, SIP trunks on. So I'm going to move them from the user PRs I switch to the um, SIP trunk switch we just installed. And at that point, uh, we're notified that uh, we have some license issues. Uh, by the way, if you hit OK, it's going to save it anyway. It'll just take you to the license page. If you hit Cancel, it'll go ahead and save it anyway. But uh, it won't take you to the license page. And I don't want to go to the license page right now because I want to uh, move this other SIP trunk over to the V switch, the new trunk switch. So we've done that now, and again, we're being reminded of a license problem. I'll hit OK, and it'll take us uh, over to the license. And as you can see now, uh, I've got uh, 45 days to resolve this. And down here, I have a new entry, short tele virtual switch. SIP trunk license. So um, that is the impact of adding a virtual trunk switch uh, versus paying for an orange box.